Has God been good to you? I said, has God been good to you? Not me, but has God been good to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let me hear y'all worship him. Come on and worship him. Worship him. God has been awesome to me. He's been a good father. He's a good daddy. Hallelujah. 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 Bless his name. Hallelujah. If you can just put me in the in the house. I'm sorry, in the monitors. Amen. We just thank God. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you that's here today. You may be seated in the presence of our God and our King. Amen. How many of y'all glad to be saved today? I mean, I really, really saved. Amen. 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 Like, like the old folk used to say in the church I grew up in, I thank God for being saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. Yeah, can y'all testify to that? Amen. Amen. I thank God. I thank God. Amen. For allowing me, amen, to see yet another day. Amen. I thank God for waking us up this morning. Amen. So we can give him praise and honor one more time. David said the dead cannot praise him. Amen. Amen. So I, every time I come in the house, I don't care if there's two people in here, I'm going to get my praise on because God has been just that good to me. Amen. Can y'all testify to that? Amen. 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 Well, we're getting ready in just a moment. We're getting ready to hear amen from, uh, from our bishop, Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough. We're going to be streaming her in. We had a little difficulty, um, amen, getting everything together. This is our first time doing this, amen. She is, um, she is in New York, but she's going to be giving us a word, amen? amen? Amen, amen. A word is a word, amen? Amen, amen. But before um, I introduce her, um, we're going to have a, a solo. And I want to just um, um, honor her um, right now. I just thank God for um, a little old french fry, amen, being under such a giant, amen, um, of a person, amen. She is well known in Christendom. She is a household name, amen. And she is a woman of God. I don't believe in coming under anybody. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Huh? I believe you got to live a holy life. Y'all know something about being holy. They don't say that word no more, huh? But I believe you got to be holy. Hallelujah. I believe you got to be right. And I thank God for her life. Amen. And I thank God that God has given me a kingdom connection with her. Amen. I thank God she is a great leader. My life Amen. And the ministry has changed all the more since I have come under her. And I thank God for her. Amen. Also want to thank God for a very, very uh, dear friend of mine that I've been knowing. I think we tried to add up the years. How long we said? 16 years. Bishop, I want you to come up. I want you just, just to give everybody a greeting. Come on, y'all give him a hand clap. Amen. He's going to be our speaker. Amen. On Sunday. And I thank God, amen, for his life. He is a preaching machine, y'all. Amen, amen. And I thank God um, for him and I thank God for his life. Um, somebody give me a, a, a mic with another cover over it because y'all know we got this thing going on. Amen, amen. We have some fresh, new, brand new covers. Amen, amen. And somebody give him, give, give him a microphone. I thank God for his life. I met um, Bishop McGill, um, what did we say, 15 years ago? What, what year this is, y'all? <laughs> all the days and the years are running together for me amen amen and i think we met in 2004 when i was publishing a christian magazine amen amen and um i know him to be a man of god amen he loves the lord he absolutely loves the lord and i thank god for his life and i thank god for his friendship um, over these years and I just want him to just give you a hello and a, he drove all the way y'all here from Atlanta amen he left four day in the morning Some, somebody say four day in the morning four day in the morning so y'all know he a little bit tired amen but he made it here to the house of God nine hour drive and y'all late okay I'm gonna sit down come on bishop come on <laughs> come on let's give God <laughs> radical praise see see the normal turn me up a little make it real nice and hot Amen. So that way Sunday you'll know where to have me. Let's just let this. Amen. That's that's about as radical y'all can get. If y'all y'all know y'all y'all. All right. I, I, I know the bishop is coming, but if someone came in here and told you you just won the mega million, I believe you tear this place up. Now I want somebody to give God about. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, brother? Somebody give God just about 10 seconds. Oh! Y'all don't understand. 
see, Pastor, I saw a car flip over while I was on the way here. But I'm so glad I'm here in Jesus' name because I'm absolutely apostolic, positively Pentecostal, and holiness is simply beautiful. Now, I need somebody that God saved from something. Anybody he pulled out of something and brought you over here and uh, saved you and you acting stingy with his praise. Come on, G give him, I'm about to sit down, but I need five seconds of real, for real praise. Like my praise is gonna get me into heaven, come on. <laughs> no, 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 don't y'all shout yet. You got to learn how to praise God for where he brought you from. Now, now the remnant means a special chosen people. Yes, 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 come on, break it down. And so I know I'm here. To, to follow I don't know how I'm going to do it but, <laughs> but Bishop Jacqueline McCullough I love her to life but I want you to learn how to praise God for who he is now if you know him to be wonderful if you know him to be the mighty father the, the everlasting yeah. father the prince of peace Praise Him for who He is. Yeah, bless Your name, God. Hallelujah, bless Your name. Because you got to create an atmosphere before the word comes. You got to create an atmosphere. So y'all too funny in here, but God done been good to somebody. Now let's prepare the atmosphere for the word of God. Hallelujah, bless Your name. Now come on, praise Him for who He is. He's a mighty God. To Your name. He's the everlasting Father. He's the Rose of Sharon. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless your name. I know him to be Jesus. He made it Hallelujah. easy for us. Hallelujah. Wrapped it all into one. Y'all behave yourself. Y'all got it right now. Hallelujah. You can sit down. You got the atmosphere right where it needs Thank to you, be. Thank you, Lord God. Thank but you. But I Jesus. love him for who he is. Hallelujah. Bless Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. You brought me nine hours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come Thank on. You, while God. some of y'all were snoring, Thank I was driving. God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Four o'clock this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brought me. Seen cars turn over. Y'all ain't saying that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I mean, turn over. Thank you. God for life. Thank oh my you, God. Jesus. And so I'm Thank glad you. to be Hallelujah. one in the number and Hallelujah. on this uh, great Amen. platform along Thank with you, Bishop Lord. McCullough you, Jesus. and myself. God, Amen. Amen. God Spoke to your pastor and I'm Amen. glad to be a part of it. So let's Amen. give God praise for the word that's coming. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 Bishop, can you hear me? Make sure this make sure this is on Deacon John. Can you hear me, Bishop? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Amen. Amen. Can amen. you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We're so honored. Yeah. Can you we're see so, me? We're so honored. Amen. We can see you, Bishop. Okay. You're as beautiful as ever. Amen. 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 We can see you. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. If we can all stand, amen, and reverence, amen, to Bishop. Jacqueline Ime Colored, we thank you, God. We thank you uh, for being here um, this, this evening and gracing us with your presence. And now you have the floor. Thank you so much. Praise God. Amen. It's in this way. Amen. The one thing about the Church of the Living God, you can't hold us down. God will give us creative ways of coming together and lifting up his name. So I salute you. Um, um, Pastor Tavernier, I salute you, Remnant Church International, for not allowing the pandemic to stop you from having your gathering. I know the enemy comes to block us and to stop us, but with God on our side, if God be for us, who can be against us? So I salute you on your anniversary celebration. I salute your church. I thank God that he gave you a heart to lead his people and he gave his people a heart to follow you in remnant. So I thank God. I bring you greetings from the headquarter church, um, Beth, Beth Rafa, the International Gathering at Beth Rafa, and also from the Rafa Alliance. We all wish you a great anniversary. And we know that this is just the beginning. This is the very, very beginning of great beginnings. Amen. So please be encouraged. Please don't let any of this... Um, um, inconvenience block you from seeing where God is taking you. And I salute every minister, every pastor, every leader that's in the house 
the Lord bless you. And so we're going to go right to the word of God. And um, I, I, I took the theme, the actual theme, and I'm going to be preaching from that theme tonight. So I'm in Genesis 46 and verse 28. And um, I'd like to just read the 28th verse. That's Genesis 46, 28. I'm reading from the King James Version. And it says, here begins God's word. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And here, that's the word of the Lord. And the, the title of the sermon is, We're Going Up to Goshen. We're Going Up to Goshen. So, you know, we're in the book of Genesis. And the book of Genesis is just literally the book of beginnings. And in, in this book, we will see... He talks about, as the Greeks call it, the book of generation, or it's also called by the Hebrew, the book of covenant. So this book talks about the creation. And of course, the, the greatest creation of all is the creation of Adam and Eve. So it talks about Adam and Eve and the beginning of the human race, the time of innocence and the time of the fall. And then it takes you through all the stuff that happens in between time all the way to the the history of the patriarchs from adam all the way to the death of joseph so you've got this whole um, um narrative this historical presentation of the beginnings and what happens in the beginnings but if you don't remember anything else i want you to remember that when you read the book of genesis you see two things two things that you ought to see right away and if you don't see it right away keep reading it you're going to see God's creative purpose and that he's the creator of the universe. The second thing you want to see is that God makes covenant with his people. He makes covenant. So he's a creator God and he's a covenant keeping God. He's a creator God and he's a covenant keeping God. And what is a covenant? A covenant is an agreement. It's an agreement. Now, it's, it's not the agreement that we make with each other because we break it. It's not the agreement we make with, with, with institutions, you know, even where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay for this and I don't pay for it. Or, you know, somebody says they're going to do something and they don't do, do that thing. We're not talking about man's covenant. We're talking about God's covenant with his people. And he's a God that does not break his covenant. Isn't that assuring? That is so comforting to know that when God makes arrangements, covenants with his people, he does not break it. So that's what you're going to see in Genesis. Now, this particular chapter, this particular chapter, Genesis 46, has to do with Jacob in transition. And I just want to let Remnant know, and of course, anyone who is listening, we are in the midst of transition, certainly. We are not where we were as we were in December last year. When January came in, many of us had no clue that from March on that we would be in a pandemic. It has affected every area of our lives. We are in transition and we don't know what the world, what the community, what the nation is going to look like politically, economically, socially, even with our school system. So we are in high transitional mode. So Jacob was concerned because he was going to be going on a journey. It was not just an ordinary journey. It was a journey of removal to another country. He was going to leave his country and go to Egypt. This was a whole change of lifestyle. And when, when, when our, our lives shift like that, it can cause a lot of fear, anxiety, Many saints stop going to church. Many people stop praying because they're so anxious. Things are not the same. They, they were supposed to get a stimulus check and they didn't get it. Their employ the employment has been compromised. The children, you don't know whether you should send them to school or not to school. It's not only the COVID, but it's also the weather patterns. 
We don't know what's going to happen. A storm is coming, a, a tropical storm, a hurricane. We're living in a very volatile time. So Jacob, you can understand what Jacob was going through. So he had to leave. So he came to a place called uh, Beersheba, and this is a place where he chose his place to set up an altar. He wanted to talk to God. Whenever you're in transition, take time out to get instructions. Don't ever panic in a storm. Always sit and wait. A lot of people jump up and move because they panic. They, they, they can't stand the pressure. They can't stand the test. They can't stand the uh, um, um, insecurity. They can't stand the uncertainty. So they move. No, you don't ever move. You do what um, um, Jacob did. He found an altar. Now, this is not for everybody. This is for believers. This is for people that know that they can talk to their God. He found an altar. And this is a place where his grandfather talked to the Lord when he needed uh, instruction. This is a place where his father talked to the Lord. And this is a place where he went, should I go to Egypt? Should I go? Remember now what was happening in Egypt? Joseph, his son, had not seen him for many, many years. Joseph was sold. Joseph was in Egypt. But now Joseph was prime minister. Joseph had power. Joseph had economic plan. Joseph now was the answer to their survival. But even though he knew that Joseph was there, his son was there, he would see his son, he would see Benjamin, they would have food, they would have shelter, he still asked the Lord. So many of us, we only look at what we need, but we don't look at the one who provides the need. Even though he was desperate, he was not too desperate to pray. Even though he needed food, there was a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land. But before he jumped up and run, he asked the Lord, shall I go to Egypt? Remember, God, you told my father, Isaac, not to go to Egypt in the time of the famine. So I want to make sure that I'm hearing right. And I'm talking to somebody, make sure you're hearing right. Make sure that you're not making decisions based on what even what your mother said or your father said or somebody told you. Make sure that you get the word of the Lord. When you make a move, make sure it's a word from the Lord. Take the pattern from Jacob. Take the example from Jacob. Don't follow the crowd. Don't follow somebody's opinion. Don't even follow your own opinion. Always get a word from the Lord. And so Jacob got a word from the Lord. The Lord told him, fear not. I am going to be your God in Egypt. I will be with you in Egypt. I will go down with you in Egypt. Even in Egypt, I will keep my covenant. I'm not going to break my agreement with you. Okay? I will accompany you on your journey. What, what, what assurance? You know, you, you, we get up and make major, the saints today get up and make major decisions. They jump up and move, even in the COVID, even in the COVID, we jump up and make major decisions. We, we leave jobs, we leave churches, we leave this, leave that, and we never ask the Lord. We never check in. We need the Lord to give us assurance. I will be with you. I will not forsake you. I will make every crooked path straight. I will make sure that your enemies will not destroy you. If I am for you, who can be against you? You need to know that before you jump up and make any major decision. And so God assured him, go down, your son is there. And your son has been appointed and assigned to take care of you in the famine. You're going to Goshen, not because you feel it. You're not going to Goshen because you were panicking. You're going to Goshen because I am sending you and I will be with you. Oh, come on, you need to ask the Lord. Please, God, don't let me do anything through here unless you speak to me. And so he went down. He went down to Goshen. But before, you know, before we do anything, even when the Lord 
talks to us, he gives us a plan. He just doesn't tell us to do something without giving us the plan, the strategy. God gives strategies. He gives strategies. That's why he said to, to, to Peter and the disciples, upon this rock I build my church and the strategy of hell shall not prevail. So God has a strategy, no matter what the enemy is plotting or planning, no matter what kind of strategy the enemy has, whether it's economic, political, social, whatever it is, when God gives you a word, he has a counter strategy. So don't panic. Just ask the Lord to give you the plan. And here is the plan. The first thing he decided, I am not just going to rush to Egypt I'm not going, even though my son is there, I'm going to send the right person to go first. And this is such a powerful strategy. You know, in 20, in 20, uh, um, 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 18 or so, we went down, we went down to Jamaica and we did the, um, the medical mission where we saw over 2000 people and, and we had almost 400 people with us ministering to people and that kind of mammoth job where you're giving out medicine and you're giving out school supplies and you're giving out food and you're you're there early in the morning until late at night and we were in one of the worst parts of jamaica where it was even on a curfew where there was always somebody getting shot and getting killed and yet god sent us to one of those troublesome hostile areas in jamaica with our children they had children's church they had they had teachings about food and exercise they had teachings about wellness we got up early in the morning and we didn't get to bed until late at night so it was a mammoth job and it was in august and the lord said to me i want you to go down in july i said well god we just came back in june why do i have to go down he said i want you to go down as an advanced team and I want you to walk on the length and breadth of the land and rebuke evil and rebuke murder and rebuke attack and rebuke anything that would come against uh, the clinic uh, and command safety and protection for everyone that comes on the property. I rebuke anything that would stop us from getting the medication, any hindrances, any attacks from the enemy, any secret plans. Oh, we have to walk up and down. And we did it from the length and breadth. And I can report victory because we obeyed the Lord. Not one person got killed. Not one person died. Not one person was sick. Nobody attacked the clinic. Everybody got their medicine and more. So when you get a word from the Lord, he also gives you a strategy. I want you to hear me. So the first thing he said, the first thing Jacob said, and he sent Judah before him unto Joseph. Now, who is Judah? The name Judah means praise. So before you do anything, you got to send praise. That's one of the that's one of the blessings and the weapons that the church sometimes does not use. We need, the, we need the music to praise him. We, we only praise him when we are blessed. We only praise him when you feel it. We only praise him when we get money. But praise should be done in any time, every time. Any time you're getting ready to walk into something different, you should have a praise moment. And the, here, is, here is Jacob. He prayed. He got a word from the Lord. But now he has a strategy. Send Judah. Now, who was Judah? Judah was a fourth son of Jacob by his wife Leah. And he was a founder. He is really the lineage of Jesus. Judah was the most prominent of the 12 sons of Jacob. He saved Joseph. Remember when the brothers killed him or tried to kill him and leave him in the pit, it was Judah that says, don't kill him. Judah intervened and Judah said, don't kill him, sell him. Okay, it was Judah in, in, in Egypt when they went to Egypt, it was Judah who stood up and, 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 and begged for Benjamin's life. It was Judah who gave a long speech so that his brothers would not be in trouble. So Judah is always the defense. 
Judah is your defense. Judah is your protection. When you get ready to do something, when your back is against the wall and you don't know what else to do, just start praising him. When you're getting ready to enter into a sticky situation, don't go in the room without praise. Don't sit at the table without praise. Don't have the confrontation without praise. He sent Judah. Judah had a, a, a reputation of bringing peace. Judah had a reputation of bringing protection. Judah had a reputation of giving insight. Judah has a reputation of creating an, an opportunities so that things can run smoothly. If you want things to run smoothly, don't go in fighting, go in praising. If you want God to open the door, start praising him. If you want God to give you instructions, start praising him. Who did he send first? Judah. In, in Genesis 43 and 8, it says, Then Judah said to Israel, Send the boy along with me and we will go at once so that we and you and our children may live and not die. And I myself will guarantee his safety. You can hold me personally responsible for him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him here before you, I will bear the blame before you all my life. As it is, if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. What Judah is saying is, I will stand for you. I will be your rear guard. When you praise the Lord, he comes down and he protects you. He said, I will make every crooked path straight. I will make a way there is no way. I will make water in the wilderness. I will give you what you need. I will change men's hearts. I will cause those that come up against you one way to flee from before your ways, before your faith seven ways. All you need to do, saints, is not just a church praise, it's a life praise. You don't just praise him in church, you praise him in the house. Now that you're sheltered in and we can't go, you praise him in the car. You praise him if you're going to the office, when you get to the office. Wherever you go, send Judah first. Now, why, why, why didn't he... Why didn't he send Judah? Judah is the fourth son. He's not the first son. And according to the Hebrew, the first son is always a preeminent son. They go by age. First, second, first son, second son, third son. So the first son is always the one who gets the birthright or the double portion. Why is Judah so in, so so up there? Why is he up there as a leader? Why is he now? Why is he going ahead? You know why? Because in Genesis 49 and 3, when, when Jacob was blessing his children, he started calling out their character. And he said, Reuben, you're my firstborn. My might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. But you are unstable as water. You cannot win the war. You cannot get the victory with instability. Reuben is unstable. You know what unstable as water means? You put water in a round jar and it's round. You put water in a tall glass and it looks tall. You put water in a pink cup and it looks pink. You look water, you put water in a yellow cup and it looks yellow. You freeze water and it becomes solid. You heat up water and it becomes a vapor. Water takes on the shape. And when people are like that, you don't know what they are today. You don't know they're up today. They're one thing today. They're smiling today and they're moody tonight. They, you can't trust them. They change their story. They change their attitude. They're not straight. They're not consistent. You cannot go to Goshen like that. You cannot go to Goshen being unstable. That's why Jacob didn't send Reuben, because he's unstable. And not only is he unstable, but he says, you know, you shall not excel. You shall not become great. Why? Because you went up to your father's bed and thou defilest it. He went up to my couch. In other words, you know, Jacob had two wives and many concubines. 
So, so apparently, Reuben went and slept with one of one of his, his, his concubines. And what he's saying is, you are not, you're out of control sexually. You can't go up to Goshen and win and get what I have for you if you are out of control in your behavior. You're unstable. You can't be trusted. And the church is in trouble today because we are asking people to go and possess land, to go and lead, to go and minister when they are unstable as water and they're not trustworthy. And then why didn't he use Simeon and Levi? Why didn't you see and Levi? They had an anger problem. You can't go up to Goshen and get what God has for you if you can't control your anger. You can't lead. You can't lead. The Bible says, greater is he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. We're living in a time of anger and violence and racism and injustice. And anger is destructive. Anger will destroy you inside and out. The Bible said anger belongeth in the bosom of a fool. So if you're angry, you can't lead. You can't get instruction from God. Your passion is out of control. You're violent. Anger leads to violence. Here it is in the scripture. We know that 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 your sister Dinah uh, went down to 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 Shechem, and 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 um, Hamar's son Shechem, you know, violated her. Um, uh, he didn't rape her, but he seduced her, and so the brothers, of course, became angry because he's not circumcised. He doesn't have the covenant, and they believe in covenant family should have to be with covenant family. And because that happened, they said to him, well, if you, if you violate her, he said, I want to marry her. I'm sorry. I really want to, I want to respect her. He was repentant. He wanted to do the right thing. And they said, okay, okay, you have to be circumcised so it can be legal in our culture. And he said, okay, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. I, I, I'll be circumcised. I'll come, I'll come over to your side. I'll come over to your side. And so they circumcised him. But while he was while he was recuperating, while he was recuperating, they killed him because they were angry and they were hateful. They were not forgiving. They were not caring. The young man wanted a second chance and they would not give him a second chance. And this is what the father said. Simeon, Simeon and Levi are brethren and instruments of cruelty. You can't be cruel and lead in Goshen. He says, you're, sin, you're instruments of cruelty. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you were angry and you slew a man and you were self-willed. So you were out of control. Curse me your anger. For it was fierce. It was cruel. And so instead of calling on, on, on Reuben, can't use Reuben, he's out of control. Can't you, Simeon and Levi, they're too angry and they're too cruel. How, who can we get to make this transition smooth? <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Who can lead us into this strange time? These are strange times. It's a whole new country. America will never be the same again. Who is going to take us into this strange country? Not an angry man, not angry people, not people out of control, not people who are cruel and unstable, not people who have no character. We need somebody, we need somebody that's going to take us so that we can be safe. Stand for Judah. Stand for Judah. And so... Judah, Judah now, in that same chapter 49, here is what his father said. Judah is like a lion's whelp. The scepter shall not depart from him, 
nor a lawgiver from between his feet. In other words, out of Judah, even his future is secure. Out of Judah shall the Messiah come. He represents the lineage, the lineage of David. In Revelation 5 and 5, it says, And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, prevail to open the book and to loose the seven seals. So all the way in Revelation, Judah is represented. Praise. Praise is the thing that we need to hold on to. And we've been taught, we, 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 the enemy wants you to only praise him when you feel it. David never said, I will praise the Lord when I feel it. He said, I will. It's a matter of will. And what is the Lord saying? We're going through transition. We're going through difficulty. This is going to be a new America, a new normal. We don't know how our lives are going to be. We don't know when the vaccine will come. We don't know if we'll ever come back to a certain kind of familiarity. But we're going to make it to Goshen because we're going to, we're not going to send room. We're not going to send anything that's out of control. We're not going to do it with anger. We're not going to do it with cruelty. We're going to do it with praise. Now come on and lift your hands and praise the Lord right now. Praise him right now. So the second thing is, what's going to happen when we get to Goshen? What are the, what are the important things that we should look for when we get to Goshen? Okay? It says... It says here in, in, in the 28th verse, and he sent Judah and he, before him unto Joseph to what? Direct his face into Goshen. In other words, they're going to Goshen and they're going to do it being focused. You're going to praise and you're going to stay focused. You can't go into Goshen scattered, impulsive. You can't go into Goshen uh, uh, distracted. You got to stay focused. And the word direct there means you have to you have to point like an arrow. You have to aim. You have to know exactly why you're going to Goshen. You can't go into Goshen looking for the wrong things. You can't go into Goshen looking for the same things in Canaan. This is not Canaan. This is Goshen. This is this is a change. This is something new. You've got to now focus. What is it that you should look for in Goshen? Your face. He said, turn his face, turn his mind. So praise will get your mind together. Praise will give you direction. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So when they got to Goshen, here is Joseph, the same one that they sold. Here is Joseph, the same one that they wanted to kill. Here is Joseph, the one that they had forgotten about almost. He is there in Goshen, and he is going to set them up in the way God wants them to, set, to be set up. You're not going to Goshen to live the way you want to live. You're going to live the way God wants you to live. And because Goshen is in Egypt. Egypt is not Canaan. So God wants to protect you even in a strange land, even in a strange situation, even in a difficult situation. God says, follow me. I've got it set up for you. Praise me and I'll tell you what to do. Praise me and I'll tell you how to do it. So when they got down there, you know, Joseph was in charge. He was a big man. He was the one that was going to make sure that the famine would not destroy them. Pharaoh had given him power, so he had power, he had access, he, has, he had an open door for them. So this is the two things that he was going to make sure that they had even in Goshen. And these are the two things that you better make sure you keep your eye on in Goshen. In Goshen, they were going to be shepherds. In other words, they thought about their economic situation. When you praise the Lord, he's going to give you strategy on how to economically survive in this transition. That's the first thing. Joseph is saying, there is a famine in the land. There's a famine in Canaan and there's a famine in Egypt. 
But God had given Joseph the strategy of taking care of two nations. The, the seven year of lean, they wouldn't even feel it. You know, God can take you through a famine so that you can't even feel it. He made sure that the, that, 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 the, the good years, that the fat years would be so fattened that it would cover the lean years. God will give you a plan that even in the midst of the famine, you, famine, you won't be evicted. You won't be in the street. You won't have to beg for bread. You won't have to stand on the soup line. Your children will have food. Your children will have clothes. You, you, you will have light. The, the water won't be cut off. You see, you've got to praise God and follow him. That's what Joseph was there for. Joseph, there's a Joseph in Goshen. God will raise up somebody in Goshen to navigate you through so that you will not fall apart. So two things that Joseph, and these are the two things that God is going to do. He set them up to do what they were called to do. What were they called to be? Shepherds. So in Goshen, you're going to do what God has called you to do. This is how they made their money. They, 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 were, they, were, they were shepherds. They were shepherds. They were not vine dressers. They were shepherds. And so he put them in Goshen because Goshen is in a little isolated wet area where it's separated from the main part of Egypt. And it is good for farming. So God is going to take you to a place where you're able to do what he has called you to do. You see, all you got to do is follow him. You praise him and you let praise go before you and you follow the strategy. And the strategy is you're coming into Goshen, but it's no different from what he called you. You're not coming to Goshen to change your, your ministry. You're not coming to Goshen to change. You're coming to Goshen to continue what God has called you to do. Hallelujah to Jesus. You're not coming into Goshen to forget the purpose of God, to forget the will of God, to forget what God. I'm going to create an atmosphere that even in the COVID, you're going to do my will. Even in the COVID, you're going to preach the gospel. Even in the COVID, souls are going to be saved. You're going to continue to shepherd souls. You're going to continue to feed souls. You're going to continue to minister right there in Goshen. You're not going to Goshen for vacation. You're not going to Goshen to hide. You're not going to Goshen to give up ministry. It's too hard. It's not what I thought it was being. Look, what, look, it's not the same like it used to be. Church is not the same like it used to be. It, that has nothing to do with your calling. It has nothing to do with your responsibility. It has nothing to do with what God has given you to do. These are shepherds. And even though they're in Goshen in a strange land, in a strange country, God created an atmosphere, created an opportunity. See, when you praise him, he creates opportunity. He creates situation so you can continue to do his will. Not only that, but it was an isolated area from Egyptian society, which means that they would not be influenced by Egyptian idolatry. So God was protecting two things, their economy and their religion, their economy and their religion. God is not taking you to Goshen so you could backslide. He's not taking you to Goshen so you could stop praying. He's not taking you to Goshen so you can stop reading your Bible. He, Goshen is an isolated place, an isolated place. It's separate because, you see, when you start mingling, if they had gone to the main society, the mainstream of Egypt, then they would have ended up doing like what the children of Israel did when they first came out of Egypt. They would have started building a golden calf. They would have started acting worldly. He's not taking you to Goshen for you to act worldly. He's taking you to Goshen for you to continue to be his separate people, a holy nation, a peculiar people that are called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. So Goshen is not for you to go off and mingle. It's for you to go off and be separate. So they were going to survive economically. They were going to live 
They were going to have food and they were going to continue their worship. They're going to continue their tradition, their relationship with God. Goshen is not prosperity without devotion. He did not, they wanted them, he wanted them, he fixed it for them so that they'll have a separate land. And you see what happened is the Egyptians, you see, they looked down on farmers. They think that farmers and people who took care of sheep were the lowest. They don't have anything to do with them. They were into agriculture. So it's okay. They scorned them. They looked down on them. But that was good because it would keep, keep them from mingling, from mingling, from mingling. Many of you are wondering why unsafe people can't stand you. It's because God has separated you. So you won't mingle, mingle, mingle. They ought to. They will laugh at you because your assignment is precious. They will laugh at you because your, 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 your relationship with God intimidates them. They will laugh at you because God called you out of, called you out of to him, called you away from from to him and when he does that people can't understand you so don't feel bad that you're being isolated or ostracized or criticized or rejected or people don't want to be bothered with you because in Goshen God wants to separate you so that you can continue to worship him to do what he calls you to do and not be distracted the church the church started mingling with the world. That's why we're in the, in, the, in, the, in the pandemic. The church, the church, the church got too comfortable with the world. The church got too, too interested in the world. The church got too fascinated with the world. And that's why the church has been shut down like it is. Now God is saying, I'm taking you out and I'm bringing you to Goshen, not to bless you with more houses, not to bless you with more cars. I gave you cars and you acted crazy. I gave you a job and you forgot to pay your tithes and offering. I blessed you and gave you and gave you all of that. And you could, every, every time you turn around, it's too much church, too much church, too much church. I gave you all kinds of opportunity and you forgot me. But where you're going now, I set it up so that you will know who I am. I am your covenant-keeping God, that I keep my word to a thousand generations. Lord, have mercy. I am the God that called you out of darkness. Oh, my dear, I'm so into this marvelous light. And I'm taking you, not there to, to bless you and then have you live sloppily. No, you're going to Goshen to live right. Genesis 45 and 10, you shall live in the region of Goshen, and be near to me, Joseph said. You're going to be close to me. You and your children and grandchildren, your flocks and your herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Listen to what the prophetic word is. Oh, my God. The famine is not over yet. My, 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 my. We want to run out of it. The famine is not over yet. Stay close to Goshen. Stay close to your faith. Stay close to what I call you to do. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. The only way to do it is to do it the way God says. Stick close to the strategy. Stay in the area that God has placed you. Keep out of the Egyptian worldly society. If you do it, you're going to be destitute because this pandemic is not over. Genesis 46 and 31. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, my brothers and my father's household who were living in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds. They tend livestock and they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, what is your occupation? You should answer, your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our fathers did. 
Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen, for all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. In other words, don't deny your identity. When you stand before Pharaoh, own who you are. You see, when they said there were shepherds, that's what put them in Goshen. If they'd gotten up there and lied, they would have never been in that isolated spot of protection. When you deny your identity, you become unprotected. The Bible said, if you honor me before men, I will honor you. If you deny me before men, I will deny you. And many times we deny God in front of people because we think that we're going to get favor. We think we're going to get favor. I remember one of the gentlemen in my church a couple of years ago was going through a foreclosure and he went to the bank to get help. And the officer of the bank told him, maybe if you stop paying your tithes and offering, you would have a better financial picture and you'd be able to save your house. And he got up and walked out of the bank because he realized that paying his tithes and offering is the way God is going to deliver him. So the enemy is always telling you to compromise, always telling you to dumb down your faith, always telling you to deny who you are. But you need to stand firm. That's your guarantee of protection. That's your guarantee of provision. That's your guarantee of deliverance. That's your guarantee of help. When you go, speak up. Stop acting like you don't know him. <laughs> Stop acting like he's not your only help. He said he's your present help in the time of trouble. Come on, don't you deny him. Uh, I, 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 I compromise, we compromise, we compromise. We want comfort. We want, we want to make sure that we get certain things. We get certain things. The Lord said you can't do nothing without me. And sometimes you've got to take a stand. Even if it means that I lose, I will not deny my Christ. For on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So Goshen became their dwelling place. And the Bible said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Where is your, where is your Goshen today? Are you compromising Goshen so you can dwell in the society of Egypt? Are you compromising Goshen because Goshen has you on the backside of the desert? My God. Goshen has you separated. Goshen has you in an area, but that's your safety. That's your safety. That's your protection. We want to be accepted. We want to be seen. We want to be known. We want to be here and there. But God has some of us sheltered down. So that he can speak to us, so he can protect us, so he can endow us with his presence, so he can provide for us. They had provision in Goshen. They had food in Goshen. But most importantly, they had the worship in Goshen. Glory to God. So here's my conclusion tonight. Praise should go before you. And when you settle down, don't violate your faith. And Goshen was a place of healing because that's when Joseph and his brothers and his father got together and the wickedness of the past, God washed it away and the nation of Israel was secured. Joseph was reunited to his family. His father was reunited to him. So Goshen is a place of praise. Goshen is a place of faith. Goshen is a place of healing. And Lord, we thank you tonight. We praise you tonight that we are not going to go through this pandemic as if we don't have Goshen. But we won't have it right if we're still flirting with the world. If we're still in bed with the world. Oh God, we've got to separate ourselves and take instructions from you. Reuben couldn't lead, and Simeon and Levi couldn't lead. Can't do and walk through in anger. The world is angry, 
and legitimately so. The world is angry because of the violence and the injustice, but we can't get to Goshen with violence. The world is out of control. The world lives a life of indiscretion, sexual promiscuity even in the church, out of control, pornography out of control. We can't get to Goshen. Lord, help us to rise up in praise. And praise is not just with our mouths, praise is with our lives, praise with our commitment, praise with our devotion, praise with our yes, praise with our surrender. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Help us, God. We want Goshen's prosperity, but we don't want Goshen's God. Help us, God, to know that we are not going to get there on our own. You have a strategy. Praise must go before us. Praise must wake us up in the morning. Praise must be in the new day. Praise must be at night. And God, we have to realize that we must not give up our identity. We are servants of the living God, called from our mother's womb to show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. We were born and bought with your blood. We were separated from the devil's hand. You were snatched from sin. You atoned for us. You gave us a new life in Christ. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. We are not what we used to be. Your grace is sufficient, brought us from a long ways off and we are not giving up our faith. We're taking our faith to Goshen. And thank you for the healing. Thank you for the protection and thank you for the deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, keep worshiping him. Come on, we thank him. Come on and praise him. Judah first. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, y'all. Stand to your feet. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him. What a powerful word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Come on, y'all. Let's begin to worship him. Let's begin to worship him. Let's begin to worship him in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We honor you, God. We give you all the praise. Come on, worship him. Judah first. Judah first. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. In the name of Jesus. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. God inhabits the praises of his people. Come on, begin to worship him. We thank you, God. We thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We're in the world, but not of the world. We thank you, God. We honor you. We thank you, God. Come on, lift up your voices in this house. Lift up your voice in this room. Let us begin to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the first and the last. Come on, let me hear you praise him. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let me begin to hear you worship him. Open up your mouths with the fruit of your lips. Begin to worship him. Oh, God, we honor you, God. We thank you, God, for keeping us and sustaining us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for isolation. We thank you, God, for making us shepherds, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. Come on and worship him. Worship him and worship him. Come on, come on, begin to worship him. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, 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 God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. God inhabits the praise of his people. He said if he be lifted up, that he would draw all men unto him. We give God thanks and honor for a powerful word we thank God for our bishop come on and give her a hand clap 
we honor her her grace we thank you bishop what a powerful word hallelujah you've set this house in order you've set our personal lives in order hallelujah we thank you we thank you in the name of jesus we give you honor give you praise hallelujah we thank you lord you are our strength we thank you before we leave this place but never god's presence is there anybody in here anybody amen that needs a touch from the lord right where you stand just raise your hand right where you stand just raise your hand hallelujah right where you stand raise your hand we thank you 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 father we honor you father we thank you god we thank you god even even during this time of a pandemic father we still trust in you father we don't trust in mask and and hand sanitizer but god our trust is in you father we thank you today god father we lift up everyone father in this house god those that have a special need father with their hands raised god father we pray unto you god tonight in the name of jesus father we pray god that you would visit their homes father in the name of jesus god draw them closer to you father in the name of jesus god draw them nigh to you father in the name of jesus oh god we thank you god for your presence we thank you father in the name of jesus god we thank you for your love father we thank you god for your protection god even during this time we thank you father in the name of jesus father what can we do without you father absolutely nothing father we thank you god we honor you god we thank you for your word that has gone forth even today father we honor you and give you all the praise in Jesus' name, God, we, touch, we pray, God, for every, everybody, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that are going through challenges, Father. We thank you, God, for those, God, oh, God, that had the COVID virus, God, and you raised them up, Father. We thank you, God. We honor you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for guiding the doctor's hands, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, and we give you praise, God. And as Bishop said, not only when we come into your house, but even in our homes, even in our cars, we'll give you praise, God. David said, early in the morning, will you hear my voice? Oh, God, I praise you, Father. Thank you for the breath in our lungs, Father. It is your breath that's in our lungs, Father. We thank you. And what can we do without you, God? Absolutely nothing. We thank you, God, and we honor you, God. We thank you, God. And we will send you the first, God. Even in a COVID, we will praise you. We will praise you, God. Father, we thank you, God. Some of us, our cupboards are full. We thank you, God. We thank you. Some of us still have jobs. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We even getting a full paycheck, God. It is you, Father, and we honor you today. We honor you tonight, God, and we give you all the praise and the honor. We thank you. Come on, Remnick, begin to praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go. Hallelujah, but have a seat if you can. Have a seat if you can. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Wasn't that a powerful word? Amen. Good God Almighty, good God Almighty, we just thank God for, for that word. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Reaches, reaches to me, to me. Yeah. 
Say you are, you are my strength. Strength like no other. Yeah. Strength like no other. Say it, reach, reach it to me. Open your mouth, say you are. Say you, you are, are my strength. strength. Strength like no other. Is all the way from heaven to me. Reach Reaches to me. One more time, say, come on, make it personal. Say, you are my, my strength. strength. Come on and say, strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach to me. One more time, say you are my hope. Say you, you are my hope. Hope, hope like no other. Hope like no other. Come on, say it reaches. Reaches. Y'all still ain't getting it. Y'all still ain't getting it. Come on and tell them, say you are. getting ready to go you can keep playing we're getting ready to go one thing I know about the Lord is when you entreat him and you tell him how awesome he is and that you can't do nothing without him Come on, Pastor. when you say God it is your breath yes. y'all go like that Y'all know people that's in the hospital cannot do that? Yes. We take it for granted. Yeah. My God, my God. Yeah. Huh? It don't take much for me to praise God. I don't have to be in here to praise God. I don't need nobody to praise God with me. I praise him all by myself. Because I know that he is my strength and he is my hope. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all, we getting ready to go. Right. Don't ask him for nothing. Just tell him how awesome he is. Just tell him he's the lover of your soul. <laughs> tell him that he's been better to you than 10 husbands. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Tell him he's been better to you than 10 wives. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love you, Lord. I love you, Father. I love you, Daddy. I love you. You're the best father in the world. To me. I thank you. I thank you, God. Y'all, we're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go. Is there anybody here that doesn't have a relationship with the Lord? We don't want to leave this place. Amen. My understanding is a lot of people that's getting saved. This COVID is bringing a lot of people to Christ. Did y'all know that? And we got to be ready to witness to them. Huh? I know some churches are closed down. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't talk about it. But there's some that are open. Amen. So when these people need to come to the house of God, they can search and find a church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Amen. So we have to be ready to give them a word. Is there anybody here? I don't want to leave. Everybody sanctified? Everybody filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
We're getting ready to go. Yes, give God a hand clap. <laughs> I thank y'all so much. Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to go. I promise you. I promise you. I thank God for each and every one of you that's here. Amen. I honor, I honor her grace, Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullard. Come on, y'all. Give it up. Amen. Such a powerful woman of God. Amen. Amen. Y'all can keep playing it. I like that song. Y'all can keep playing it. Amen. Such an honor to be under her. I give God thanks. She can take one little old scripture and dissect it. Pull stuff out of that I didn't even see. <laughs> see, that's why you need to be under covering. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because you don't know it all. You don't know it all. Amen. I don't know it all. Amen. I thank God for her life. Amen. Thank God for her.